Aha! I was actually right. I was right. I was right. Sophie Pecora, that one girl who we saw on America's Got Talent the other day in the new season, she did do a cover of a Billie Eilish song that Billie Eilish should watch and reacted to it, obviously, as you would. And yeah, she did a cover of uh, You Should See Me in a Crown, which I actually really do like that song. It's a pretty good song. And it's actually a pretty solid cover of that song. Although, having seen the music video for the, uh, for You Should See Me in a Crown, and having seen the, uh, animated version of the music video, or it's not an animated version of the music video, it's, it's an, it's a music video, and it's animated, but it's not the same one as the live action one. If you're afraid of spiders, don't watch it. Because it will frighten you. Happy Thursday, everybody. Yes, it is Thursday. We are almost at the weekend. You know, it's day 517, day 516, 516 for me, which means I now have been doing, uh, I have now been making videos for as many days as there are episodes of the One Piece anime pre-time skip. Yes, I... <laughs> yes, as a One Piece fan, of course I would make that, you know, connection, because that's just how it is. Um, although, if you really... If you really want to know why there was even a time skip at all, it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. See, uh, and I am going to be getting into spoilers here. See, at some point before the end of the first half of One Piece, the entire crew got separated. And they were just about to head into the second part of their journey called, which is known as the New World. Problem is, everyone in the New World is so powerful that if they were to go as they are, then they would lose horribly. So... The time skip was used so that they would take two years in their time. It was, funny enough, it was actually only a month in real time for us, where they basically train and become stronger. So when they met up again in two years, they'd be ready to take on the new world. And we've been in the new world pretty much ever since, and it's been awesome. So, yeah. Although some people are going to make the question, which is better, pre-time skip one piece or post-time skip one piece? For now, I will say that it's just pre-time skip because even though the ending isn't really a happy ending necessarily, it's still a complete narrative and story from start to finish. Theoretically, you could actually end the um, the series where it ends pre-time skip and you'd be done, but now we want to have a happy ending, and that's what we're going to have someday. Listen, One Piece has been going on for almost 22 years now so it's gonna be a good while before it ends i theorize that it's going to i mean in terms of the ending i do i mean you've heard me say this before the one the ending of one piece is going to be as emotionally satisfying and as well worth the wait as harry potter and the deathly hallows part two and avengers endgame yeah, so it'll be that awesome of an ending. Which, you know, speaking of, um, you know, awesome endings, it took embarrassingly longer for me to realize this than it should have, but seriously, after Avengers Endgame came out, so many shows were ending. The Big Bang Theory, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Game of Thrones. Like, seriously, these shows are all falling one by one. Well, not falling one by one, I mean... I guess ending one by one, because falling would indicate that, you know, the show was so bad that there was, like, a backlash that caused, like, some sort of rift in the entire social media community or something like that. I don't know. But, yes. You know, we had all that, and... I mean, again, we've had some pretty... I mean, we had some pretty decent endings, too. Funny enough, um... And this is so awesome... Adult Swim has been showing, like, old episodes of, Sa of Samurai Jack 
uh, like eight, uh, on eight o'clock at night. So I've been watching that and the show, the episode they showed last night was a little bit emotional for me because for one thing, it features a crying baby, which, you know, I was like, Oh, a crying baby. That's, that's sad. I, I, I want to help that crying baby. I, I just do. But, um, if you're a fan of Samurai Jack, it's the uh, episode where Jack saves a baby and journeys the baby to find the baby's parents. And along the way, they uh, Jack tells the story of uh, Momotaro, or Peach Boy, which is actually a very famous story in Japanese mythology. In fact, it's arguably the most famous story in Japanese mythology. And by the end of the episode... You know, because the baby saw Jack fight enemies, he develops, uh, you know, the uh, sort of samurai, uh, he develops the, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, Sakai, which is the spirit of the samurai warrior. So, I mean, obviously I've seen the ending of Samurai Jack after so many years, so technically it's likely that baby never exists at all, but... You know, say if that wasn't the case, then the future of the world would have been in good hands. And who knows, maybe that baby would have inherited Jack's sword and fight Aku himself. I don't know. That would have been cool. But it's emotional because that was the last episode that was made and aired. And I do believe that episode actually... No, no, that wasn't the one that won the Emmy. It was uh, The Birth of Eagle. But... It was the last episode that was made, produced, and aired before Samurai Jack was unfortunately canceled for 10 years. So, having finally seen again after all the... Because I would avoid that episode immensely because, you know, it signified the end. But having seen it after all these years, I really do like that episode. It's actually a very, a very nice, you know, it's a good episode. So, that was... That was really nice. Um, let's see what else. Um, I was watching uh, game two of the uh, Stanley Cup Finals for a little bit. I saw the, um, holy cow, that was the first, you know, you know, great first period. I mean, four goals, two on each side, scored by both teams, and three of them were around... 10 minutes and change. Like, again, I, have, I haven't I have really seen who won yet. I mean, I pretty much worked out, you know, got ready for the day and immediately started this. So I'm going to look up who won already. But, yeah, you know, again, I mean, outside of football, my sports terminology really isn't the greatest. I mean, I've only been, tr I mean, I've only just been trying to get the hang of my, my basketball terminology. And therefore, of the four major sports we have in America, well, I, you know what, forget, I'm going to say five, because, you know, I want to include soccer on there. Like, obviously, football, like, I would say football is the one I know the most, then probably basketball, then baseball, then soccer, and then hockey. Actually, it's high with probably soccer and high. Well, you know, pretty much the the bottom ones are all it's high. Just football is the one of the best that you know with the knowledge of and whatever. And even that's not really that great. But one thing I did notice about um, you know, the game, and again, I am in no way, shape, or form an expert on hockey. I actually have actually quite a few brothers from Trinity Poly who would know this stuff better than I can, not even including the three captains. But one thing I did notice in the game last night is, like, you know how the, uh, you have that space behind the goal where it's, it's like the, it's like, it sort of like circles around or whatever. St. Louis is actually really good at intercepting the puck around, you know, that back area of the goal, which I thought was, you know, kind of neat. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Excuse me. But another thing I did notice was, um, uh, hold on a second. I'm trying to adjust myself here. Is that, and keep in mind that the score is like one nothing, And then, because, uh, Boston scored first. 
And then St. Louis immediately, well, not immediately answered. It was around 9.36, I think it was, when St. Louis scored again. And it was just barely after 10 minutes where St. Louis just made a careless mistake and Boston scored almost immediately. Like, you got to work on your defense right there. I mean, I mean my father is said this many years for not just in football but for any sport but you know defense wins championships you know it's like that in football it's like that in basketball it's like that in lacrosse you know pretty much any team sport you can think of and therefore hockey would be would be no exception so yeah excuse me it's weird I didn't really I didn't, I didn't really sleep as well as I should have last night. I don't, I don't know why. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up the, uh, I'm gonna look up the, uh, uh, hockey score last night. NHL. Who won last night? Uh. Oh. Okay, um. Turns out, uh, St. Louis did win last night. Making the score now, um, uh, one to one in the series. Do they play by seven or do they play by five? I got a, is it best of four or best of three? Or best of, uh, sorry, best of five or best of seven is why, is what I'm supposed to ask. I mean, you know, I'll just, I'll just say that it's best of seven. So, yeah. Honestly, uh, you know, the Stanley Cup is looking, you know, pretty, pretty exciting. You know, honestly, again, I don't really follow hockey as much as, you know, a lot of other sports. So, oh yeah, one thing I, one thing I just saw on my computer that, um, oh, oh, it was an overtime. Okay. That, uh, that, that, that's who won. The Blues beat the Bruins in overtime. 3-2. Wow. All four goals I saw scored were scored not even in 15 minutes. And it was remained scoreless throughout the rest of the game. Wow, it must have been a very big defensive struggle after that point. So, oh yeah, another thing I saw was um one guy from the Bruins really got hit. Like, this was shortly after Boston scored again, I believe. And he recovers the puck from, you know, the end of the wall. And it was a combination of the guy from St. Louis, like, banging into him, like, into his shoulder, and his head slammed against the wall. I'm like, ooh. I mean, yeah, I get it. You know, hockey is a notoriously high-contact sport. And so when people get hit, they get hard, but man, that was, that was pretty tough to watch. I'm really glad that, you know, he got up and now he's safe. That, that's pretty sweet. So, yeah. I guess all I have to do now is get ready to watch Hot Ones in several hours from now. Yeah, I actually started this video a lot earlier than I normally would throughout the day. Like usually it's almost 6.30 when I'm starting this video and it's, not even 6.15 now, which shows how long I've been up for. So, in terms of what I'm doing tonight, I think I may go see Rocket Man. I'll let you know. If there's a movie tonight, I'm going to let, you're going to know about it because I'll be talking about my reaction to it. And again, we have hot ones in a few hours, so looking forward to that. So, yeah, I think this weekend's going to be pretty good although i kind of wish it was a little more sunny it's been no it's been really cloudy lately which is a real shame but what can you do you know the sun may not be shining and there may be plenty of clouds in sight and it may be raining but that's not going to ruin my day at least it shouldn't so like favorite share hit that subscribe button Follow me on the social media platforms. 
I am humbled I made this video for all of you guys to watch. Enjoy for today. I hope we all have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Get ready for that season nine episode, Hat Ones. And remember, for the guys that want to talk or chat, I'm always going to be here to lend near. And I will always have your back. Take care and make good choices. See ya.